What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Today's topic is one of my favorite topics. Y'all see me smiling. I, I get extremely excited about talking about this. This is investing, but it's not just like a general investing video. This is a very hyper specific investing video about how to Invest your first few hundred dollars, whether it's a hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars, anything below a thousand. That's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk to any hardworking adult who's been thinking about investing but isn't really sure. They're kind of on the fence because they heard it could be risky. You could lose a lot of money doing it. It's basically like legalized gambling and stuff like that. These were a lot of the things that I heard too when I first got started. And as a result, I didn't start investing immediately. And I waited a couple of years before I actually really started investing seriously. And as a result, I missed out on multiple thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. But, you know, I'm going to make sure the same thing doesn't happen to you. And even if you have been waiting a couple of years, at least I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you can walk away feeling a lot more educated and a lot more like you don't have to guess your way through investing quite as much. So we're going to jump straight into this. I want to give the specific scenario that you have $500 that you're wanting to invest. This is what I would do if I were in your situation. Now, this is there is a caveat to this. This is assuming that you're already contributing to a 401k. You already got a full time job. You got benefits. You got all that good stuff. The first thing I would do is I would recommend that you at least this is bare minimum, at least fifteen hundred dollars in my regular savings account. And I had at least a month worth of after tax pay within my emergency fund before I even got comfortable wanting to invest $500 into the stock market. Because the thing about investing is investing into stocks in the stock market, that's part of your portfolio. Part of that portfolio is also going to be your cash. So being that you're starting with cash, you have to make sure you're strategic and you have that cushion already set up. That's the minimum that I would feel comfortable investing with. Your minimum might be different than mine, but you want to give yourself a standard of how much cash you want to have before you feel comfortable starting to invest. Because if you, here's the reason why. If you start investing, but you have little to no cash in your savings, and then something happens with the economy, like you get laid off or something, God forbid, then you have to pull from your assets and liquidate your assets you are now going to miss out on the growth that could have been, especially if the stock market crashes and you actually lose money. So now your $500 is now, let's say, $450. You just lost $50 that you're not going to get back, and now it goes back into your savings. So you would have been better off having that saved anyway, right? So the idea is that you have a security cushion in your savings account already. So you want to have that set up already. So those are the assumptions that I have made about you without even knowing you. With the first $500, here's what I would personally do. I would invest in a Roth IRA. Now you could open up an individual investing account. You can do a bunch of other things, but I think if you're just getting started, you should open up another tax advantaged account. So if you do have a 401k, you know how it works. As of 2023, you can contribute up to $22,500. If you're under 50, if you're 50 or older, you can do up to $30,000. The key with the 401k is though, as that money goes in, it is not taxed yet. Once the money comes out, it's going to be taxed. With the Roth IRA, it's flipped. It's flipped in that the money is taxed before it goes into the account. And when it comes out, it will not be taxed. You can do up to $6,500 per year in your Roth IRA if you're under 50. And if you're 50 or older, you can do $7,500. That's your max for that. But here's what I would do. I would do a little bit of research about what a Roth IRA is because I gave you a very general synopsis of it. Uh, what I would do is I would click the video up here and watch that video right after this video that I created just to break down what a Roth IRA is and how to retire tax free essentially. But what I would do is I wouldn't invest into individual stocks just yet. I would do some research about broad based index funds. And what you'll see when you start researching that is you'll see 
index funds, but you'll also see this term called ETFs. And you're going to be like, what the heck is that? An ETF is an exchange traded fund. So you have index funds and exchange traded funds. Sometimes they're used interchangeably, but they are not the same thing. So they have a slight difference. ETFs can be traded just like a stock on the stock market. Index funds are a little bit different than that. Whereas index funds can only be bought and sold for the price that's set at the end of the trading day. Now that might not mean that much to you, but I just wanted to give you the difference. Uh, basically ETFs are a lot more tax efficient and they're cheaper to own because they come with less expenses, but they have a lot of similarities. So what I would do is I would compare and contrast the two a bit more and see which one best fits my description and which one is gonna be best for me in the future. And what I would personally look at is I would look for the most popular types of broad-based index funds and ETFs. And there's three main ones. There's the S&P 500, which if you're watching this video, I'm pretty sure you've at least heard it in conversation before. There's the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and there's the Total Stock Market Index. Those are the three indexes and both ETFs and index funds have that. And if you don't know what an index is, an index is essentially a benchmark. So the S&P 500 is a benchmark based off of how the top 500 large cap stocks operate and perform within the U.S. The Dow Jones Industrial Average attracts 30 large cap publicly owned blue chip companies trading on the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. The difference between the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500 has over 500 companies in it. The Dow Jones Industrial Average has 30. So one is more volatile than the other. Keep that in mind. Then we have the total market index. And that's essentially the entire stock market, how the entire thing performs and it blends the stocks together. And there could be thousands in there. Like some of the really popular funds have 2000 plus companies within that. And what they do in each of these types of indexes is they blend a bunch of companies together and they put the best performing ones at the top and they allocate the most of that company to it. So let's say out of the 100% of the pie, Apple is performing the highest. So they put 26% of Apple into that fund and then there's other companies behind it and then they just blend a bunch of other companies at the bottom where each of them might get one percent of the fund that's essentially how it works it's basically putting the strongest best companies front and center and then the rest of them are behind them so i would look at those three i would look at which are my favorite ones and i would pick one or two of them to choose from from there i would look at the most popular ETFs within the S&P 500 and within say for me I would choose the S&P 500 and the total stock market and I would look at what are the most popular ETFs within there just like I wrote in my book the S&P 500 for Vanguard would be VFIAX for index fund and VTSAX for the total stock market index fund whereas the S&P 500 and total stock market index for ETFs would be VOO for the S&P 500 and VTI for the total stock market index for the ETFs. Now those are just examples you can really honestly look at a bunch of them. In my upcoming investing course, I'm gonna teach my students exactly how to break down everything and exactly how to find ETFs that hardly anyone knows about from scratch. But for the sake of you watching this video, just hit up Google and type in what are the most popular ETFs in those. Look at what you like Look at the liquidity within each ETF. Look at how safe it is. Look at their reputation. Look at their track record. Look at how much they've grown over the past 10, 20, 30 years. And the two that I would honestly choose, and these are the two that I actually chose years and years and years ago, was VOO and VTI. And I just put them both inside of my Roth IRA. And I would put $500 in those right there. Not like 500 each, but like, a fund with both VOO and VTI, I would just put $500 into that fund. And what you can do is you can download an app like say M1 Finance. And if you want access to M1 Finance, you can click my link below. Doing that will give us both $10. It may not be much, but that's more than $0 to go towards your future investment. So that's what I recommend doing. I would download an app like M1 Finances after figuring out which two ETFs I wanted to get. That's exactly what I would do. The reason why I ended up choosing the ETFs first over the index funds was because the index funds both had a $3,000 minimum and I didn't have $6,000 at the time to just throw into both of them. So what I did instead was I just got the cheaper option, which is the ETF. So I 
still got the best of both worlds and I still got the exposure to both of those funds. It was just in the M1 Finance. Another thing you should keep in mind is that M1 Finance does not have BFIAX or VTSAX to get you better off just going to the Vanguard website and investing in those. But, but even so, I, I wouldn't skip this step. I would still look into index funds and ETFs so I could decide if I either want to save up for the index funds or go straight into the ETFs. ETFs work better for me, so I chose ETFs at first. So yeah, that's what I would do. I would put both of them in there. And with, with M1 Finance, you actually get what is called a pie chart. And since you only have two funds, it's gonna be split into 50-50, but you could change it to like 60%. 40%. I would recommend starting off looking at the broad base, but they also have specialized ETFs in which it goes to different sectors. So a sector would be like technology or healthcare or utilities or industrials, stuff like that. But just starting out, you want to have as much variety as possible, which means it can have good growth, but a very little bit of drawdown. And all drawdown is the decline in the price of that asset that you bought. So you want the price to keep going up the longer you hold it. And when it does go down, it doesn't go down so much that it makes your heart drop down to your stomach. I've been through that. You don't want that, I'm telling you. And then from there, anytime I got an extra $500 that I could invest, I would put it into that fund. So if it's 50-50, Obviously, 250 would go into one, 250 would go into the other, but if it's 60 40, the numbers are going to change a little bit. But either way, whichever one is comfortable for you, you can put your money in it and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. You don't really got to look at it, you don't really got to think about it. It's called a lazy retirement fund because it is diversified. You just didn't choose. 200 different you know stocks to invest in you looked at an etf and that etf was based off of an index which stood the test of time and you went from there so just depending on your preference that's what i would do and i would just sit back relax and let the money grow that's it and in between that, I would be reading up on investing. I'll be reading up on what stocks are within the ETF, which ones are top performing, which ones are at the top of the list. And then I would be starting to think about what stocks I'm going to be investing in. And there have been times where I've looked at ETFs and I wasn't that interested in the stocks that were within the top of the fund. So I kept looking and I kept researching until I found what I needed. Again, my course is going to help you out with that valuable information, but it can at least point you into the right direction anyway if you are interested in the course that's coming up leave me a comment down below let me know leave me a dm on instagram i will be reaching out to you because i expect to be done with it here pretty soon it's going to be about a four hour course total and i'll be having live sessions to help everyone digest the course and i want everybody to give me feedback and i'm going to keep improving the product until it gets to where i want it to be and we will go from there it will be deeply discounted if you're one of the early birds so make sure you check that out my instagram link is my instagram link is below so you can hit me up there anyway that's the video for today thank you so much for watching my name is reggie bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you control your finances and control your life thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video